finally gotten brave enough to tackle these kingpins in the axle here. Uh, it's a little bit fiddly, but it all makes sense what you need to do. So this is the stub axle, and it has these bushes. This is the top bush, which goes in there like that. This is the bottom bush, which goes in there like that. And there's also a thrust washer that sits on top of the bottom bush here. This one's actually pinned, and you can see there's a little, a little pin there uh, that this sits on to hold it in place. Um, I guess just to stop it rotating. So what we need to do is push these bushes into the stub axle and then ream them out. But you also need to make sure there's the right amount of vertical clearance between the stub axle and the axle there. You can see there's a gap. And to set that gap, we need to measure up the thickness of the flanges on these bushes and the thickness of this and the thickness of the axle eye and then subtract it from the, the gap here. And what we want is two thou of clearance. So there's, there's effectively, when all this is assembled, there needs to be two thou of up and down movement on that stub axle. And the way you do that is you, you measure all these things up which is what I've done there, and then you machine the top bush, which is this one. On the lathe, you just take whatever fraction amount you need to take off there to give you that right clearance. So I've measured all that up, and I know how much I need to reduce that to give me the clearance in here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that on the lathe. And then I will push these bushes into the stub axle. I'll probably heat the stub axle up a bit just to get it to expand to make it easier to, to push these in. Um, and before I do that, I think what I'll do is for the top one, you, you can use threaded bar and washers and things to be able to pull that through. The bottom one's a little, little bit trickier because it's blind. So I think you can do the opposite and push it through from that side because these are a tight fit. Um, into there that won't that won't easily slide in there so I'm going to do that for both sides and then we can look at reaming them so I've just machined off the the tiny amount of the the face of the two top bushes um, I figured out exactly how much to reduce it and I did it very carefully because I'm still getting used to this lathe and um, checking all the the readings and things on it so I I did it very carefully lots of little cuts measuring every single time so that's now correct I've got the stub axles in the little toaster oven to heat them up and I'm gonna put the bushes in the freezer to cool them down and then hopefully I can just push them together easily so that all ended up going a little bit wrong um, what I discovered is even with the the stub axles heated up and the bushes cooled down um, they still were too tight to go into the stub axles what I ended up having to do was clean up the the inside of the stub axle I, I used this brake cylinder hone just to clean it up to make sure there was no paint and make sure the inside surface was nice and smooth and then I actually had to machine a tiny fraction of the the outside of the bush to get it to be a really tight push fit into here and then to actually pull it through I had to um, use a threaded bolt and effectively pull it through so I had to machine up a spacer here because this bush sticks through the top so you need a little spacer here otherwise it just pulls up hard um, and this is where having a, a good collection of um, random circular bits of steel and heavy washers and and um, metal plates and things becomes really useful because then you can make up these sort of these pullers here so it's taken me quite a while just to get this first one into position um, I'm gonna have to do something similar on the bottom but that's a bit harder because the bush is blind so you can't push through it but I may be able to do the opposite where you kind of push against it and tighten up the bolt and push it into there. So I'm going to give that a try and see how that goes. 
Uh, I accidentally stuffed up again and started pushing in the the bottom bush before I dreamed the top one. So I had to push that back out. And now I'm going to go ahead and ream, the, ream through the top bush. What I've done is I actually ended up using the old bushing and I'm using that as a as a as a collar. So that's quite a tight fit into the top here and the reamer goes straight through that. So I'm going to use that basically as a guide so I can keep that reasonably straight and ream through this top bush. Then I can press the bottom one in place and then I ream through from the opposite direction knowing that this one is already straight. Uh, that's the idea, so I'll see how that goes. Well, the first half of the reaming went pretty well, so that kingpin goes through. Once it gets in there, is a nice sliding but tight fit um, in that stub axle. So now I can push in the lower one and ream through using the top one as a guide. This is how I pushed the second bush into place um, using a bolt here and just a, a decent stack of washers and you effectively jam it in there and undo the bolt um, with, a, with a spanner on the, the head of the bolt and the nut. You loosen it off which, which makes this longer so it pushes the, the bush into place. This bush has a little chamfer on the edge so that it doesn't bind up on the inside there which is why it looks like it's not fully home but it is and I did notice that the the other lower bush doesn't have that um, doesn't have that chamfer machined on it so I'm gonna have to add that just to make sure it does fully seat down in here although this one doesn't have as big a, a ridge on the inside there so that may actually seat in there okay. So now I'm reaming through the bottom bush using the top one as the pilot. Uh, this is pretty much bottomed out now I think and one of the problems is because this this reamer has a taper on the end the kingpin won't go all the way down into that bush so we do need to open up the bottom of the bush uh, just to make it the right diameter. So to fettle the end of this so that I can get the um, the kingpin all the way home, I need to open up the bottom of this bush where it's a bit tight because of the taper on the on the reamer. Um, and the way I'm doing it was suggested to me by two different people actually. What I've got is a piece of steel bar in the drill and the end of it is is slotted and into the slot I have a piece of um, rather worn out piece now but a, a piece of folded up emery paper uh, or wet and dry paper so oh, it's not going to focus so that just fits into the slot and then what I'm doing is I feed this down through the top bush into the lower bush. Now let's see if we can do this. It's a bit hard with one hand. And then I'm able to just, using the drill, you know, that's a little bit rough. When I, when I do it in practice, I actually use my left hand to, to keep the shaft a bit more straight and centralized. But basically I just work it round and round and round in the end of the bush and I've made the slot and the width of the paper um, pretty much the the height that I need to to open out and it takes forever um, you can see it is actually doing something there you can see the the sanding dust in there but I've been doing it for quite a while this is just WD-40 I've just been using that to sort of wash it out um, I've probably been working on this one for half an hour, 45 minutes, so it's very, very slow. But it should be fairly accurate. So if I slide the kingpin through, um, it's still too tight. 
but you can see it's it's sort of pushing in and this cotter pin basically needs to be in the middle here so you can see i've got a little way to go when i started out it was about it was about there if we um you can see there's this other little flat on the kingpin so when i started out it was getting to about there so now it, it, it'll go in further if I push it, but then of course it jams up and you need it to rotate. So you can see it, it, it's, it's going in a bit further. Um, so this still needs a, a lot more work inside there. But this is a good sliding fit now. Once I open up the bottom, um, this should all be nice and, and solid. And I've also checked this on the, the end of the axle there and it does fit and there is a little bit of clearance there needs to be two to four thou end float there i haven't measured it i'm not sure exactly what it is but there, there's some so it doesn't bind up at all so that should hopefully be good finally have one side of the axle done um, i didn't need to sand all the way down to the bottom of that lower bush because the pin doesn't actually go all the way down to the bottom. So once I started getting pretty close, I started doing test fits on the actual axle here with the kingpin cotter in place. That's what locks the kingpin in place. Um, that's just a push fit at the moment. But when this is all done properly, that gets hammered in. Um, and that seems to work. So there does seem to be, there's a tiny little bit of movement there. I think. It's a bit hard to tell. Um, Without having the wheels on there, it's hard to know, but that seems pretty good, I think. Never having seen one of these before, it's 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 hard to tell, but um, I think that's probably okay. I have the axle finished now. I've got both ends on there. Um, I don't have the end caps on there yet. And... Doing the second side was much, much faster than doing the first side. I think that end took me about three hours, and this end took me less than an hour. And that included doing the um, the sanding of the, the bottom of the bush to get that all nice and tight. Um, this side's come out really well. It moves freely, and there's no play in it whatsoever. This side moves freely. This is the first side I did, but there's a tiny amount of play. Um, it's not much, but you can feel something there. And I'm not sure, I don't think it's the kingpin in the bushes. I think it's the, where the kingpin is in the eye of the axle here. So these cotters are just, just finger tight at the moment. They're not hammered in place. Um, one thing I may try is something that's done on Austin 7s occasionally, which is when you assemble this, you use Loctite bearing fit inside there. And you, you slather it on the inside of the, the axle eye and then when you push the pin through obviously a lot of it gets pushed out but any gaps there it'll it'll wick into the gaps and, and fill them up and that locks that in place um, when you do that you just have to push the pin through and then pump grease through the bottom until it starts coming out of the gap here just to make sure there's no loctite in there because otherwise obviously your axle could bind up so you pump it through and you just keep working it so I can give that a try. Um, it's a bit hard to know exactly how much movement is there until you, unless you've got a wheel on there and you can you can rock it backwards and forwards. But that's probably not too bad. Um, so that's good. I, it was a job I was dreading and put off for a long time, but now I've done it once. I, I kind of understand how it works, and. Even if I have to redo the side, it means buying new bushes, but I know exactly how to do it now. So, on to the next things.